Hi, I'm Avery Foley, writer and speaker with Answers in Genesis, and most recently, live stream host for our 2023 Answers for Women conference held at the Ark Encounter. We received so much great feedback from that live stream, which featured interviews with many of the speakers, and I wanted to share some of that great content with you. So stay tuned. And if you'd like to know more about next year's conference, just click the link in the description. Hope you enjoy. Hello, ladies. Welcome back to Answers for Women 2023. All right, I am here with an exclusive interview for you with probably most of you recognize, founder and CEO of Answers in Genesis, Ark Encounter Creation Museum, Ken Ham. Uh, so we are gonna talk a little bit more about the theme for this year's conference, which of course is Abide, Holding Fast and Suffering. And just sort of, we wanna get a little more personal, Ken, with some of like things that have happened in your life and how the Lord has carried you through that and how you have abided in Christ during times of suffering in your family, well, yes, I could go through some examples there. By the way, this is a women's conference, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you have men speaking at it. We do, we do. <laughs> and women. Yes, both. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you know, when I look back on our life, I think, you know, one of the examples in regard to the whole suffering issue and dealing with death and so on was the uh, death of my younger brother. Mm. I had a younger brother who was a great Bible teacher. And, you know, it's it's so hard to understand from a human perspective because, you know, he loved the Lord. He loved God's word. He loved to preach. He took a stand on Genesis, you know, and the majority of pastors not, don't yeah, take that strong stand do that. on Genesis. And you think we need more pastors like that. Why would the Lord take him mm -hmm. at a young age? And why did the Lord allow him to suffer so much? Because he had two years of suffering. He had mm -hmm. sort of a very advanced sort of dementia, frontal lobe dementia actually mm. affected him terribly. And I mean, he was a great speaker and yet he lost his ability to be able to speak, to be able to preach. He, he, he lost his memory in, in regard to uh, God's word and what he preached on. And for two years, we watched mm. him just go wow. down and down and down. And, you know, I think about my, my godly mother, I mean, she, had to deal with the death of my father when he was fairly young. I mean, at 66, yeah. actually, he passed away. Wow, yeah. And she never got over that. Mm. And she would always say how much she missed him, but it never mm. at all shook her faith. Mm. She always trusted in the Lord because she recognized this earth, while it's so temporary, life is so temporary, life is so short. I mean, compared to eternity, this life is, what, a spit in the bucket that dries up before it gets to the bottom. How's that for a word picture? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so she recognized that this life is very short. I, you know, in, in her last days too, she even was saying to us, and she passed away just before her 92nd birthday. Mm. And she said to us, you know, it just seems like yesterday I was a little girl and then I got married and where did it all go? Where did time go? <laughs> right. And I think that's important for us all to look at, to realize we should be looking at things from an eternal perspective. And mm. one of the things that I talked about with my mother, too, was that we don't know anything compared to what God knows. I mean, mm. he is infinite in knowledge and wisdom, yeah. infinite. And so when you look at things and say, why did he take, you know, my father at a young age, why do you take my brother at a much younger age? He was a great Bible teacher. My father's a great Bible teacher too. He was a, a school teacher. But then you have to stand back and say, is it possible that God knows things we don't? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we, we look at it all and say, it doesn't make sense from this perspective. What about his family? He was a great Bible teacher. We need more of them. But, you know, compared to what God knows, we, we know hardly anything. Mm. And so is it possible there are other factors involved that we don't know about, and we have to stand back and say, yes. And in fact, mm -hmm. that's the lesson that God teaches us through the book of Job. Y you know what's interesting about the book of Job is that people say, yeah, it's all about death and suffering. I mean, it's such a big issue for everyone. You yeah. know, how do you deal with death and suffering? Uh, you know, uh, we're only human. Where's, where's God in all of this? Isn't he a loving God? Well, why do we have all this death and suffering? Of course, from the big picture perspective, well, it's our fault because we sinned against a holy God. Yeah. Right? We're living in a fallen world. That's why. In fact, I was uh, just at a church 
speaking and the pastor asked for a question time afterwards. I always, that's always <laughs> something I think, oh, <laughs> what am I going to get? <laughs> what sort of question? And some of them, some of the people want to make statements, not, not, a, <laughs> like, this not is ask not a question. questions. And, but anyway, um, you know, dealing, dealing with this issue and uh, someone that was, was asking one of the questions dealt with that issue of, you know, death and suffering and, and disease. And, and they said, because I, I talked on the issue of one race. Mm -hmm. We're all one race, one blood. We'll go back to Adam and Eve. And then I talked about gender. I, I talked about marriage. Uh, and I talked about the fact there's only two genders, male and female, and Adam and Eve were the first man and woman, and we all come from Adam and Eve. So, you know, putting all that together. Right, yeah, yeah. You're probably teaching but on Genesis would be my guess, right? I, yeah, I was, because, <laughs> because Genesis 1 to 11 is the foundation for everything. Right. And it's the foundation for understanding death and suffering, too. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so this person said to me, what about, what about um, children that are born with both male and female genitalia? That's how she asked the question. Okay, yeah. You know, and... I said, well, it's because of sin. There are mutations. There can be genetic problems. And mm -hmm. it, not just, you know, in regard to the sex chromosomes, but in regard to other things as well. And that person was like a light bulb going in the head. Oh, yeah, we're living in a fallen world. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's because of sin. Yeah, mm -hmm. See, because no doubt people have come to her and said, there's not just two genders. What about what right, about yeah, this? Yeah. And they always yeah. use that. Well, you could call them exceptions, but they're a fraction of a percent of, of people who, right, who have very those rare issues. Very yeah, rare. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've got to, first of all, understand that we do live in a fallen world, right? And when Job was dealing with issues of death and suffering, I mean, you think from his perspective, he lost his children. Yeah. He lost his material possessions. And we're told All a little. Once. We're told a little bit about what went, be, went on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. um, but Job didn't know that. Yeah. And you know, his friends are giving him advice that was not very good advice, <laughs> and God <laughs> chastened them later. Yep. And then, when Job wanted to argue with God, remember what God said, Job. Do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know this? Can you do that? Can you bind these stars? Can you do this? Can you do that? Do you know this? Do you know that? And then you read, as you go through all of that, where Job says, I, I, you know all things. I repent in dust and ashes. Mm. He recognized that we know, we've got to let God be God. He knows everything compared to what we know. I mean, we know next door to nothing. And that's an aspect that we have to stand back and say, you know, it's, it's part of without faith, it's impossible you know, to, to please God. Right, yeah. And because we're finite beings, there's always going to be that faith aspect, right? But it's not blind faith. It's a faith that makes sense of what we see. But there's faith mm -hmm. nonetheless. And without faith, it, you know, you can't please God. That's, mm. that's what God tells us. And we've got to stand back and say, Lord, I, I don't understand all these things. Some of it just doesn't make sense to me. But you are God. Mm -hmm. And I look back even in this ministry and we see things that have happened over the years and at the time you say this doesn't make sense later on you look back and you say wow mm. god used those circumstances to do something beyond what we could ever imagine like with the museum we lost our first piece of property and that must have been so discouraging at the time it was you yeah. know and then the, the, the media interviewed me and said well, you're giving up now? You know, is that it? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. They God's, didn't know you very well. <laughs> God's, God's called us to do this, right? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> God's <laughs> called us. We're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. And then when we found this other piece of property, far better piece of property, right on a major interstate, that's where the museum is today. And we look back and say, no wonder God allowed us to lose that first piece of property mm. and all the battles that we had and so on. But you won't always be able to look back mm. on this earth and, and be able to see those things. There are some things we look back and say, I guess we're not going to find out till we meet the Lord. I mm. guess we're not going to find out until heaven. And, you know, I think we will, so, so, some people have given that analogy. I'm sure many have heard of it. You look at a beautiful tapestry and it's a beautiful pattern. It might be a beautiful, exquisite piece of artwork, really. And you turn it over and you see all the threads and they're all, they all seem to be a mess. <laughs> but on the other side, it's a beautiful pattern. And that's really how we've got to look at these issues. You know, on one side, we see 
people dying and disease and suffering and all these other horrible things happening and all all this evil in the world and so mm-hmm. on. And we say, I, I, I don't understand. Look what's, look what's happening to our Western world right now. Then yeah. we turn it over on the other side and we see this beautiful pattern mm. and that's how it will be. And, you know, my, my mother knew all those things as my, my brother was was dying. Actually, everyone's dying. I hate to say this, Avery, but you're dying. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> because God says it is point another man wants to die yep. and then the judgment. So, you know, that's another aspect of this whole death and suffering issue when, when people say, you know, why did... Why did so and so die? Why did God let let someone die? You got to remember something. Everyone's going to die, mm-hmm. right? So the right question to ask is, why was it their turn to die? Well, right. we might not know why that was their time, right? Then we we might see something later on that you know is a marvelous pattern. We might not know at the time, and we may never know, as I said on the, on right, this earth. Yeah. And I mean, I look at my my own brother's uh, death and. I think, you know, the interesting thing is I did write a book about it and I've now taken that book that's already sold tens of thousands of copies, probably hundreds of thousands, and I have totally rewritten it and upgraded it and I still have the personal aspects in there, Mm -hmm. but I believe a a lot more people are going to buy that book and I think, actually, he's probably ministered to more people in his death than he did in his life, if you think about it. Um, because of that book. Now, th- that could be one thing to to come out of that. Another aspect, I think, I often consider my mother, and she didn't question God. I mean, it, in a human sense, she sort of did, uh, when she right. would say, I don't understand it. You know, we the, 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 the minister down the street is liberal. He teaches against God's word, and my son stood for God's word, and and, and yet... The minister down the street is as healthy as an ox, you know. Right. And, yeah. And my son dying and lost lost his mind, suffering in a terrible disease, and I reminded her, I said, "Mum, the minister down the street's going to die too, but when he dies, if he if he hasn't put his faith and trust in the Lord, and some of these yeah. liberal pastors, I don't know where they are spiritually. God God knows, He right. knows that. But sometimes I I have big question marks about where <laughs> yeah. they really stand when when they reject God's word and. And of course, some of them even reject the resurrection and so on. So how can they be truly right, saved? Yeah. But I said, do you realize that Robert is going to be totally healed soon? And he'll be yeah. totally healed because he's going to be in heaven with the Lord. And we've got to recognize that. And, you know, and I, I watched my mother and even though she grieved and, and she always grieved in regard to my father's death and my brother's death, but nonetheless... She was so solid in her faith. And even in the nursing home, when she was there, we, we, we had no option but for her to go to a nursing home because she lost her ability to walk. Mm. And uh, she, she had her mind sharp as a tack uh, <laughs> right up until the day that she passed away. Uh, but, and she always said something about that. She said, you know, I, I, I can't walk. I wish I could walk. I wish my legs would work, but God's let me have my mind. Mm. And she said, I'm very thankful for that and, and praise the Lord for that. And, uh, you know, Robert was one that uh, lost his ability to be able to think and and mm. uh, lost his memory and so on. And so for some people, that's the way it happens. Other people, it doesn't. And, and again, we could ask the question, why? But we don't really know why uh, on this earth except that mm. God's in control. And, you know, I... All of us, uh, as kids, and watching our mother, we saw her strong stand, her strong faith. She would always drum into us as little kids, and even, you know, at at, at uh, the time, you know, when she was in her eighties and nineties, she would never let me forget. It's always <laughs> what's done for Jesus that lasts. She would always remind hmm. me of that the the material things are meaningless, she would say. And, you know, when she had to go to a nursing home and she was only allowed to bring in a couple of things, a photograph or two, not much at all, actually. Mm. And I was sitting beside her bed and she said, you know, where's where's all the things we used to own? You know, we, I can't have them here. They're gone. And they were distributed to other people and 
you know, to, to the family and so on. And she said, all I have is a couple of photographs on the wall and, and that. And, and yet she said, but, but I'm looking forward to my, to my home in heaven. I'm looking forward to going mm. to be with the Lord. So her faith was never shaking because she stood on God's word. And even though she grieved, and that's one of the things I, I say in the book that I wrote, it's okay to question, you know, because mm. we're human. And it's okay to grieve. Because uh, sometimes I think a lot of the books you read on the death and suffering issue, are, a lot of times I think they're sort of, you know, get over it, you know, suck it up. <laughs> God's in control. Right. <laughs> and, and I think sometimes people feel guilty because they're grieving or they're crying out to God or they're questioning. Mm -hmm. but, but we're human. Right. We see that in the book of Psalms, right? With David, like questioning. Well, he God, did that. Why? Yeah. But then in the end, he goes back to, but here's what I know about God. And even, and even we, we read in the prophets where they were yeah. questioning, God, what are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why, why are you doing? Um, Hosea. Is it Hosea or Habakkuk? Habakkuk, uh, yeah. Um, where, um, see, they both start with H, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, where, you know, there's the, the, the people are under judgment, really, and there's these, this culture coming, this nation coming in and warring against them, and Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it anymore, uh, is, is crying out to the Lord. Why, why, and <laughs> what did God say? You think that's bad? You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> right. You well, you see what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because he didn't know the big picture. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you know what? That's a good reminder too, because even though God raised up these pagan nations to come and judge uh, the Israelites for their rebellion and so on. Yeah. But then he judged he them. He judged them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, of, because of what they did. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, did you have some questions to ask? You only asked one. <laughs> Well, you gave me great stuff without me having to ask too many questions. So, yeah, it's it, nice to get that personal look of like, and seeing your mom holding fast and suffering because she's she's gone through a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. She had gone through a lot of suffering in her life and seeing the impact it had on you. And then, of course, that impacts your kids, which then impacts their kids. Right. And so the, the way that... It's a generational Yeah, effect. the yeah. way that we as Christians... Um, view suffering because mm -hmm. it's such a personal issue. The way that we as Christians view suffering and that theology of suffering that we have and that we put mm -hmm. into practice doesn't just impact us. Right. It impacts generations yep. of people. Um, and that's why it's so important to build a theology of suffering, not when you're suffering, but before you're suffering, so that when the suffering does come, right, you have that to go back on. Because like your mom, if she didn't know the promises of God, mm -hmm. if she wasn't grounded in the hope of eternity and the hope of heaven and the promise that this this is a broken world, but it's not going to always be like this, she wouldn't have been able to suffer in the same way if she didn't have that foundation going in, right? Exactly. And because she had the foundation of the authority of the Word of God, that's what my father taught us, and he was adamant about God's Word being the absolute authority and the foundation uh, for our worldview, and we have to judge everything uh, we think and believe against the authority of God's Word, and my mother stood with him on that, mm. and that impacted us as kids. And then we saw it practically play out with my mother. Because I've heard mm. of many people that when a loved one dies, or you know maybe maybe they die of some horrible disease, maybe a lot of suffering, maybe they're tragically killed, or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Where they can get angry at God. Yeah. And there are people who've turned away from church because of that, mm -hmm. and and because they're angry at God. My mother never got angry at God because she recognized who God is. She mm -hmm. did grieve. She cried out to God. She questioned. But she never got angry at God because she recognized God has a right to do what he wants to do. He's the potter. Right. We're just we're, the clay just the and clay. we can't say to him, why have you made me this way? Exactly. Yeah. And she, she recognized that. And we saw that as kids. That, that had a great impact on us, you know, mm. tremendous uh, impact on us. And to see her faith so, so steadfast with what she went through uh, with, you know, the death of her husband, my father, uh, and then the death of my younger brother. And that was not a nice one at all because it was horrible to see him, just his mind deteriorate over mm. over two years and and just what he had to go through physically even. And, you know, you, you, you just think about how horrible that is. And I, I remember walking into the home where he was in 
and there were all these other people in there who were probably, you know, doctors or nurses or teachers or right. pastors. In fact, I, I, I was told one of them there was a pastor and, and they're just saying things that don't make sense or they're, you know, lying there and their mouths are open and they're dribbling. And you look, at, you look around the room and you see these people that aren't really there, so to speak, and Robert was in there with, with, with that uh, group of people because that was a special home for those people. And you think about what their lives must have been like, you know, years before. Right, and, yeah, yeah. You know, there were mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers. And now you look at them and, and then you stand back and you realize, you know what? That's what my sin has done. Mm. I mean, whose fault is that? Is that God's fault? Right. It's not God's it's, fault. Yeah. We sinned against a holy God. That's our fault. Yeah. And that's why God sent his son to save mm -hmm. us. And that's why, you know, the Apostle Paul says the sufferings of, of, of this life are nothing compared to what God has in store for us. And I yeah. remember my mother telling me that, um, you know, the, the sufferings of this life are nothing compared to eternity because you start to stand back and realize, wow, eternity compared to 70 like years, forever and ever and ever, 80 and ever years. And ever. Yeah, I better go higher than 70 because I'm a little over 70. <laughs> so, how about we go to 80? How about 90 years? 90, 100. <laughs> um, my, my grandfather on my mother's side lived to 94, I believe. Okay. And uh, my mother to almost 92. Um, so, you know, you can get up to that, to that age. Um, but um, nonetheless, and, and the older you get, the more you run down to. You notice that. You, hey, you, you'll find out, Avery, I'm as you get older. I'm next year, and I'm told oh, that's where it starts to go down. You're, you're just a chicken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, older, the older you get, the more you find out things go wrong you didn't even know you had. And <laughs> Oh, great. Such hope to look forward oh, yeah. to. <laughs> I, I go for a physical every year. I remember one year I went to the doctor and he looked on my blood tests and looked me over and he said, you're doing really great. He said, you, you, you're basically, you know, deteriorating at the right rate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel real good. Oh, thank you. Exactly that, what you want to That was a great report. Doctor. Yeah, you're going down like this. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to go down. Not too steep, just a yeah, nice, just, just nice a, slow curve. Just a nice gradual decline. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, well, thank you for helping us develop this more theology of suffering through sharing your personal story with your brother and your mom. Um, and it's just neat to see how, um, even though she's gone to be with the Lord, her testimony of faithfulness to the Lord is still continuing to teach other people. So and it is, for that. even through the book I wrote on death and suffering yes, and, yeah. the, and the one I've upgraded, because it really is centered around my mother and my brother, and also a bit about my father in regard to uh, uh, because yeah, he, um, he lost his so, father, and he lost his father when he was sixteen years old, which is interesting, because as as, as my, now my brother that went to be with the Lord, my younger brother who's a preacher, uh, he was the one that was sitting with my father, and it was in nineteen ninety five, and he was sitting with him uh, in hospital. I was over here in the, in the states. And as he was dying, and he said to him, why did you love God's word so much? And he said, because his father died when he was 16. Mm. And then he turned to the words of his heavenly father. Mm. He said, because he didn't have an earthly father. So he turned to the words of his heavenly father and saturated himself wow. in the word of God. And you stand back and look, I'm sure at the time people would say, well, why would God let a young man like that, 16 years old, lose his father and so on? And yet you stand back and see it was a time when he then saturated himself in the word of God. Look at the impact and that's had. If yeah. you come to the Creation Museum in Legacy Lobby, outside our Legacy Hall Auditorium, we have an exhibit called the Ham Family Legacy Exhibit. And my father's Bible there, opened at Genesis, of course, <laughs> uh, with his notes in there, little Noah's Ark he built me, uh, not knowing we'd build a life-size ark one day. <laughs> and then... A uh, picture of my mother as well, and my mother and father, and something about their life and so on, to challenge people what legacy they're leaving. Because mm -hmm. really, this ministry of Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, that conservatively speaking, uh, directly impacts 30 plus million a year people, probably a lot more than that directly. We've done some of the surveys and so on. Indirectly, tens of millions more mm -hmm. because of the faithfulness 
of people that stood on the word of God, of parents that stood on the word of God and raised their children up to stand boldly and uncompromisingly uh, on wow. the word of God. And look at the impact that yeah. that has had today. Yeah. And then now the impact of, of this book that's had on people. I've had people tell me they read the old edition, which I am coming out with a whole new rewritten one this year. But they've read that and said it really helped them like no other book in regard to mm. a, a tragedy in their own life because I, I dealt very practically with it. I right, was very yeah. honest and opened myself up emotionally. You know, underneath this crusty exterior, <laughs> Avery, there's, there's a soft teddy bear. You know that. <laughs> deep down. It, deep down deep in there. Down, it, it's there. <laughs> and so, and I don't often do that in a sense, open myself up emotionally like that. Uh, but I did it in that book, and even more so in the rewritten one. Actually, mm -hmm. you were the one that went through and edited it for yes, me, right? Yes, it's just a very, very good book. Just recently. <laughs> yes. And uh, you saw the softer, gentler Ken Ham yes, in there? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it was, yeah, very good. And just that, that reminder of, like, suffering well and the impact that has and is mm. continuing to have on on people um, around people. Yeah. the world. Yeah. So um, just as our encouragement to you ladies to continue to, as you're listening to these sessions through this conference weekend, build that theology of suffering so you can have it to hold you fast in, in trials and tribulations, but also so you can model that for your kids, for your grandkids, for the people around you to point them towards the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him.